Welcome back to the Spectre Creative Channel with me, your host, Scott Toyguru Nightlick, and our continuing director's commentary on the DC Universe Classic series from Mattel. And if you hadn't figured it out by the image on your screen, we are up to wave 18, which is the second to last wave that I worked on. I did not work on wave 20 and 21. So this series may wrap up with wave 19 before we get to the signature series. Or maybe I'll just like combine all the figures I didn't work on into like one video and just cover them briefly. Either way, this is an interesting wave. Uh, it's kind of a hodgepodge wave. And, uh, well, <laughs> let's jump right into it. Quick with the roll call. So first up, we have a Toy Man, which, you know, makes sense to be a toy, right? Bronze Tiger, one of the uh, Batman kind of villainy characters. And two versions of him, both of his heads. Following that with Captain Boomerang one of Flash's rogues. And now we get into our superpowers, Samurai, Black Vulcan, and El Dorado. I'm not even going to try to do a Spanish accent. I can't even try. And our Build-A-Figure complemented this superpowers theme with Apache Chief. Definitely one of the cooler and almost unexpected Build-A-Figures that we got to do over the years. So... What's with all these guys? What's with all the superpowers shoved into DC Universe Classics? Well, we'll get to that. Before we dive into that, I want to talk about the wave in general, and we should start not just with their reveal at, uh, I think this was New York Toy Fair, along with other big sets like the superpowers, or I'm sorry, the uh, Legion of Super Heroes set also got revealed at the same time. And while there is obviously a huge nod to Super Friends and Challenge of the Super Friends and the Super Powers toy line, first I want to talk about the non-Super Friends figures. So of course we're going to have to talk about our token Tiger action figure. The, obviously not, not this, this Tiger character. I'm talking about Bronze Tiger, the sometimes Batman villain, sometimes Justice League villain, also, not to be confused with other uh, walking, talking tiger characters from DC, like Talky Tawny, or the uh, homage to him, Walter, from Savage Dragon. I'm talking about the original, well, actually, Talky Tawny came first, but he was with Fawcett. I don't know. I'm confused. The point is, Bronze Tiger is a martial arts villain that can change between tiger form and human form, and we did a really cool martial arts action figure. Anytime you can get a ninja type character in an orange outfit, I mean, that's just awesome because they don't come in orange outfits that much. And he's, I mean, he kicks butt whether he's got his human head or his tiger head. While if this figure was released today, being, uh, I'm recording this at the end of 2020, beginning of 2021, both heads would clearly come in the package. That tends to be the trend now. But Back when this figure was released, that really wasn't it, so we released him as two different versions, one with the tiger head and one with the human head. This wasn't done as a cost-saving measure. It was done as a way of creating variants and chase figures in the line. And yeah, definitely looking back, it's like, well, gosh, it would make so much more sense to have both heads in the same pack because he could change his form, and that's really in any action figure that has two different head forms now, I mean, even if it's masked and unmasked, you pretty much get both heads in the same package, whether it's McFarlane, Hasbro, or Marvel. But, you know, this was 10, 15 years ago. Things were a little different. All right. The other non-Super Friends, Super Powers figure in this wave, of course, was Captain Boomerang. So Captain Boomerang, while he got some cool screen time in the Suicide Squad movie, he is DC's, uh, I guess you could say, obligatory boomerang-throwing character. And he's a member of Flash's rogues gallery, which I will have to admit, we did not do them justice in DCU classics. I mean, not at all. We did, like, almost all of Batman's villains. And Flash's villains, well, we got to some of them, and we definitely got to key villains for Flash, including Professor Zoom, Mirror Master, and uh, Captain Cold, not to be confused with Mr. Freeze. We didn't get to that many. I mean, we did do Gorilla Grodd, the big gorilla in the room, but Flash has a really cool rogues gallery. I mean, you know, Weather Wizard, Top, uh, there's all sorts of characters, and I always felt that this was one of the misses, that if the line had kept going, we should have definitely done more. And we should have done the the, uh, the classic version of Captain Boomerang, 
And in fact, you might ask why we didn't start with the classic version, why we did a modern version of Captain Boomerang as our first Captain Boomerang figure. And it simply this was a request from Warner Brothers in DC since they were introducing this new version in the comics at the time and they really wanted to promote him. So we were more than happy to align with them and be great partners and bring out this version of Boomer. Obviously, the long-term plan was to eventually get to a classic version of him as the line continued. It unfortunately never happened, but we did definitely want to do this. It was sort of, you know, in our wish list because DC Universe Classics, hence the word classics, was sort of all about that classic look. We did like doing the modern looks too, but it, we would have, you know, I think if, if, if uh, uh, I don't want to say if we had our way, I and mean, obviously we had to work as a partner with Warner and DC, but doing the uh, modern version would have probably come second in the long run. But that's okay. At least we got him out. All right. So I talked about Super Friends in the beginning, right? For those of you who don't remember Challenge of the Super Friends, it was a animated series in the early 1980s that was kind of the quintessential superhero cartoon of its time with a ton of DC characters and some original characters created for the show, some of who wound up in the toy line Super Powers, which was kind of the accompanying toy line to this show. And while we looked a lot at some of the unreleased and unmade Super Powers toys for a lot of influence with DC Universe classics, we knew that some of them might have been a bridge too far. And picking and choosing who we were going to get to was definitely important because replicating the Super Powers toy line, that infamous cross-sell from the 80s against the yellow background, that was really important to us. Uh, you can see our version of that with DCU Classics here, which was pretty cool that we were actually, I mean, we were able to do that. In fact, we not only did all the figures, but we were able to get to some of the unreleased figures and characters that were planned for future waves for Super Powers, including the uh, notorious... Green Lantern as Riddler, where they just took the Green Lantern figure and painted him as the Riddler, but only released him in Spanish-speaking countries. So, while we didn't get to, you know, the Ray or, or uh, you know, some of those more obscure characters, we did want to keep paying homage to superpowers. So when it came time to doing a character like Toy Man, who is a classic Sp Spider-Man, Superman villain, come on, Scott, get out of the Marvel Universe, a classic Superman villain doing the superpowers version was clearly the way to go. I mean, Toy Man has had quite a lot of looks over the years. I mean, he goes back decades and decades, and kind of each time he's used, he's sort of reimagined. Sometimes he's a guy in a suit. Sometimes he's in a jester outfit. Sometimes he's got a giant plaster head. I especially love the version from Superman the Animated Series and later Justice League. But yeah, there were a lot of versions of, of uh, Toy Man over the years. So obviously zeroing in on which one to do, the fact that we were doing a very heavy superpowers homage wave with Wave 18, it made sense to do the Toy Man from that show, or you know, the version that was used on the show. So it was, you know, it wasn't just, you know, taking the animation sheet and recreating it as a toy. This version also obviously had a presence in the comic books as well. And, but the horseman really nailed it. He does look like he stepped right out of the show, which was kind of the point, too. Because, like I said, we were huge fans of both the show and the toy line from the 80s. And we knew that a lot of the collectors were as well, that you grew up with the show. And by we, I mean Bill, myself, the four horsemen, all of us working on the line. And you kind of can't talk about Super Friends and the Superpowers toy line without mentioning the, uh, I guess, shall we say, ethnic diversification. Yes, there were several characters added to the show, and a few showed up as figures. For the most part, though, not so much. There were more characters featured on the show in order to ethnically diversify the figure line. You know, it wasn't enough just to have a, uh, a grown millionaire dressed as a bat and an alien who wore his red underwear on the outside of his pants. It was important to show different ethnicities, and that's why characters like Samurai were introduced on the show. So Samurai, in addition to having a really cool, awesome yellow energy blade, also had the power over the winds. He was, I guess, a, uh, well, I wouldn't say he is a stand-in for Red Tornado, but he has 
essentially the same powers. He can spin his body, he can create whirlwinds, he can uh, fly through the air using kind of a wind, whirlwindy move. Sometimes he even transforms himself basically into wind, where he you know, can even keep up with Superman this way. So while we didn't do the wind version of him, doing him in his bright orange and mauve green, uh, moss green, I don't, I don't know what color green that is. I'm not a PMS guy. But, you know, he had a very iconic look on the show. And the green and orange isn't a color scheme you see that much on Heroes. So he stood out well. Continuing with the uh, ethnic diversification of Super Friends was Black Lightning. So, oh, wait, did I say Black Lightning? I meant Black Vulcan. I don't know the story, actually, why they changed his name from Black Lightning to Black Vulcan when it's an African-American character shooting lightning. Same exact power, same ethnicity, but on the show, he was Black Vulcan, not Black Lightning. And regardless of the name, he still made a great figure. And while we weren't able to include any giant lightning bolts for him to hurl a la Zeus, he still had, you know, the black and the yellow outfit from the show and could fit perfectly in with your Superpower, Super Friends collection on your shelf and continued this theme, which climaxed with El Dorado. So El Dorado also introduced on the show and eventually made his way actually into DC Comics proper. So once again, ethnically diversifying the cast and well done and also another one of those beloved 80s characters that if you were a fan of the show you knew this character and i want to say this is the first ever el dorado action figure i'm sure someone in the comments may prove me wrong but i know that they did migo style figures eventually he never made it out into super uh, powers like this card shows this was a mock-up that some fans created of what he might have looked like had he made it and while some of his cohorts, like Orion and Cyclotron, did, El Dorado was just on the show, and then later made it into DC Comics proper as a really cool kick-ass hero. So that was the ethnic... Oh, wait a minute, we're missing somebody. I guess Samurai, Black Vulcan, El Dorado. Right, the Build-A-Figure, Apache... Ch Not this Apache Chief, this Apache Chief. So the character with the giant growing powers, when he would yell, Apache Chief, and grow, you know, as big as two or three houses. This was an unexpected surprise, I think, for a lot of people, that we would uh, kind of, you know, go this far and really close it out and get to all of the, uh, even with the Wonder Twins at San Diego Comic-Con years ago. I mean, this pretty much completed the Super Friends line with DC Universe Classics. And it was great. We really felt a huge accomplishment with this because this this wave, uh, you know, as I wrapped up my time, I felt really good that we had done superpowers justice. And, uh, you know, now Giganta had someone huge to fight because why not? Felt really great about this wave and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. We'll be back next time and uh, we'll keep this director's commentary going. Maybe on some of the figures I didn't work on too because just, to, you know, historical reasons. Thanks for watching.